Greetings everybody and shalom to you who believe. This here is a little schedule that I've, I've got here. And you can see here where I've got uh, the 8th beginning and then it shows the 9th right here. Well, underneath are the days in the Gregorian calendar and then all these others up in these uh, little daytime deals. You can see where I started the 8th and I went down around uh, this other way and put a little peak there from that those represent the sundowns okay those are sundowns and then you've got the month day of the seventh month will be the first day of this upcoming seventh new moon seventh month and it's going to start the 8th of September and last until the 9th of September which is also going to be a Sabbath day a regular seventh day Sabbath that will be the day for the feast or the day of trumpets uh, I'd like to explain a little more if you want to stick around uh, but I will also tell you that the day of atonement is uh, from my calculations please do check into this okay because the new moon is going to be on the 9th uh, so then you'd have to you know in order to keep it properly it's sundown to sundown sundown of the 8th until the 9th that's the first day and then the 10th day which is the day of atonement I my calculations is uh, September 17th at sundown until the 18th of September at sundown it's a uh, Monday evening uh, at sundown the 17th will be Monday uh, so you have to schedule these days from work okay so I'm giving you a head, heads up here so you get your employers and such because you shouldn't be working these days the day of atonement is a day that uh, you fast you shouldn't you shouldn't put suntan lotion on you shouldn't put makeup or anything like that on it's a day you're supposed to afflict yourself uh, at any cost if you can avoid having to take medications you know uh, please do so uh, if you're you know our, our king he his stripes is for our healing and uh, you know this is a day that he's going to be in the kingdom in the tabernacle that was the blueprint for Moshe down here our king is going to be bringing sacrifices and such for our at one man our atonement for all the sins we did okay and, and if you're brand new to the faith okay it, he wants to absolve you of all your past sins on the day of atonement that's why we become at one and it's a day that we give up our food and our drink and our cigarettes and whatever else you're doing you shouldn't put anything in or on your body if you wake up you got the stinky breath going on you know by all means you can brush your teeth but don't swallow okay just do your best not to you know to do anything comfortable for yourself it's a day of fasting you're supposed to uh, examine yourself uh, repent <laughs> repent of anything that comes to your mind uh, that you may have done that you realize you shouldn't it's a day that you repent of these things and you know just pour your heart out to our king and let him know that you're sorry for all the sins that you did do and that's a 24-hour period and always after a fast you want to be careful okay you don't want to eat too much heavy foods at first you might want to break your fast with uh, you know maybe some uh, vegetable broth or uh, kombucha or uh, tea or something that way uh, you're not going to have a stomach ache or anything if you eat stuff pretty heavy and fast after fasting for 24 hours it can cause a little bit of upset to your system so you know sauerkraut is probably one of the best thing or fermented vegetables that you should eat and you'll feel you know the benefit from it if you eat those things at the end of a fast <coughs> you know it's actually most anything you put in your body is an intoxicant you know I mean even drinking water after not having it for 24 hours it, it, you catch a buzz you really do so you know just be careful at the end how you break it uh, 
like I say, nothing should be put on your body. You shouldn't take showers if you can at all avoid them. Uh, you know, but if, you know, bird drops something on your head, you know, by all means, wash it out. But we shouldn't be seeking anything to help relieve us. A little olive oil you could put on your face, it says. So, if that's what you need, to, don't strike out with wicked fists. Don't be angry with one another. You really need to learn patience on that day. Uh, especially when you're around me, because I'd always say, hey, pasta uh, stick from over there to me, will you, you know, or something like that. I'd bring up food because I wanted to make sure that people were tormented <laughs> when they're fasting. Okay, so anyway, let's do a real quick prayer here, and then we'll get into Leviticus chapter 23, what it says, how to keep these feasts. Uh, and, and they're coming up on those dates. Oh, also... Uh, from my calculation, it uh, for the last great day, which is going to be the eighth day, it's seven day feast, we'll get into that, but it's actually the day after the feast is the day that you keep as if it was the last day of a feast, as a Sabbath. And that will be the 22nd of September at sundown until the 23rd at sundown okay which is the first day it, it's a it's going to be a double sabbath okay that's what uh the last great day is okay that's what it's called the last great day uh because you keep the feast of tabernacles for seven days and once way long back our Creator was so joyous with them having such a great feast that he begged them to stay another day. So they did. And that's why it becomes the last great day. And instead of the day before being a Sabbath, which it actually falls on. Okay. So it's actually keeping the seventh day of the feast as a Sabbath because it is a seventh day Sabbath. But then the 23rd is going to be. Uh, uh, a Sunday, but that will be the last great day and will be a, a Sabbath day. Okay, it's a double Sabbath. Uh, you can cook on that day, not on the regular Sabbath days, but uh, on that last great day, if you need be, you can cook. Once again, this is what it looks like. Uh, my calculations, uh, you can see how I did it. If you got a better system, please let me know. I, uh, but that's how I did the count. So anyway, let's uh, do a quick blessing here. If you would and want to pray, go ahead, click me on pause, and then I'll start here. Oh, Father Yahweh, you are so mighty in these last days, opening the door of salvation through your Son. We praise you. We thank you for our King, Yeshua. We ask that you will open our minds to these feasts, that we may keep them joyously before you and bring honor and glory to your name. That we may walk exactly as you walk, because you kept these feasts when you were here on the earth, and you said we'd be doing them forever. In fact, you're going to be calling people back when you return to their first feast, which it shows in Ezekiel, I believe it is, uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's what we're about ready to come into. I pray that uh, you'll bless us with knowledge and understanding and the desire to keep these feasts. Father Yahweh, we praise you through your righteous Son, Yahshua, we thank you and praise you and ask these things uh, for your name's sake. We pray that you will answer us and open our minds to these things, and we say, Hallelujah, Yahweh. Ah, great, here we are, verse 26 of Leviticus 23, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Also the tenth day of the seventh month, oh, I must have, uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I did it just, I missed a verse. It's supposed to be uh, Leviticus 23, 23. Then the Father spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So the first day of this month, you can look on most any calendar that has the moon phases and the date and the time for a new moon. They already know these things in advance. They know these things for years in advance, and they can go back 
thousands of years on some of these star charts and such that they have uh, on the internet and it'll calculate right down to when the new moon was when our king was born okay or uh, when the star of Bethlehem was being seen and new moons around that it'll tell you the time and the date of when it was where people make mistakes is they use the crescent and I believe I brought this out in other videos uh, David's out in the field with Jonathan and he says behold tonight is the is the new moon well he wouldn't have been able to say that if they were looking for a crescent but every 14.765 days from a new moon is going to be a full moon and every 14.765 days from a full moon will be a new moon so the calculations were there they knew these things and they would keep this festivity and that's why David was out in the field hiding uh, from King Saul because he wanted to pin him to, uh, to the wall like he almost did Jonathan and uh, while David's out there in the field read the story yourself like I said it's like in uh, oh is it 2nd Samuel it might be in 2nd 1st 2nd Samuel where it talks about these things and David was going to stay out in the field for three days because by then they would see the crescent and the new moon festivities would be over these people lived for new moon festivities okay they work all month they didn't have entertainment like we got they didn't have computers uh, they sang in their hearts they sang when they walked around and such but they enjoyed having a little banquet at the end of every month you know or the beginning of a new month and they knew what day it was in fact David was out in the field and he says behold you know this is the first day of the new moon the first day of the month and they say it on the second too so he's already counting and that's how we do this please take a look at Psalm 119 ministries uh, they're on YouTube excellent group and there's a series they do called the creators calendar very excellent uh, I do agree with most everything they say in there uh, concerning it but it shows you how to count the days and everything else from a new moon and that a new moon is actually one that you cannot see it's complete darkness so when somebody looks at the crescent uh, okay to start the feast of trumpets well they're already going to be a day or two or three late our king is going to be there available for us on the day of trumpets believe you me he's going to hear your prayers he'll hear you much better because you're going to be pleasing him you know with the uh the shofars and, and everything okay <laughs> all right there you go just do that all day long all night if you want and, and be joyous on this great feast or day of trumpets it's a memorial of blowing the trumpets a holy convocation uh, Leviticus uh, 23 25 you shall do no customary work on it of course it's going to be a seventh day Sabbath so if you're already keeping them uh, you already know that you're not going to be doing any of these things uh, and our king is going to be making these offerings of fire to our father on the day four so you don't have to go out and you know uh, uh, burn any turtle doves or anything you know let the poor things be uh, your sacrifices are not going to be seen except for your prayers that's what he wants on this uh, these great days anyway it says uh, in verse 26 and the father spoke to Moshe saying also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be a day of atonement it shall be a holy convocation for you you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire uh, to Yahweh and of course that's what our king's going to do but the tenth day I already showed on my little dealy here I don't I haven't got my camera up but it's uh <coughs> it's the 17th of September Monday at sundown until the 18th Tuesday at sundown okay sundown to sundown the 17th through the 18th and it's a day that I discussed earlier you don't eat nothing don't drink nothing don't smoke nothing 
you know, you should examine yourself, go through everything, everything, and anything that you didn't ask forgiveness of before, let it come out your mouth and ask our king, please forgive me for that. And ask him to reveal your hidden sins. That way you can confess them and you know that he's forgiven you. Otherwise, you know, especially if you're new in the faith, man, it can be a burden because you've done so many things wrong. And you can't really blanket it all together and just ask that your sins be forgiven. You need to speak these things out your mouth to our king and say, man, you know, I... You know, I, I punched that poor guy right in the eye, and he didn't really do nothing wrong. I threw that fella into the the Rhine River like four times. I didn't know he was wanting a cigarette. He just looked menacing, you know. I pray you forgive me for these things. If I could, I'd go tell the guy. But, you know, speak these things. Get them off your soul. Get them, put the burden on our king. That's what he's asking you for. Afflict your souls. 23, 28, and you shall do no uh, work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make atonement for you before Yahweh your Father. It's a day of at one to make at one for you before Yahweh our Father, and now our King too. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. Now that's pretty bad. But watch what goes on here in verse 30. It says, And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. So, you know, it's pretty bad if you don't afflict yourself. You know, you're to be cut off from the people. But if you do work on that day, he's promising you that he's going to destroy you. And you can take a look in... Uh, Isaiah chapter 24, Deuteronomy 28. He's going to explain, especially in Isaiah 24, somewhere around verse 4, 5, 6, somewhere in there, it talks about uh, the reason this destruction is coming on the earth is because of the sins, because they have, you know, they've broken the covenant, the everlasting covenant covenant, the commandments, the ordinances, the laws, the statutes, they busted them. That is why the earth is about to be destroyed. And he says here, you shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Now you know that there's very few people on the planet that's going to keep the day of at one month, the day of atonement, on the proper day, let alone keep it at all. Everyone else is going to be breaking that. They're going to be working. And, it's, and our father already said he's going to destroy them. Well, in order to destroy them, he's going to have to destroy a bunch of us too, you know. I mean, it's a pretty big world covered with these sinners. And some of us may, you know, end up falling asleep or whatever. But we can be rest assured if we keep these feasts. Uh, keep the day of at one minute and such as we're supposed to, then, you know, we'll be raised for the kingdom. Any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. I, how can people get away from this and think that, our father wasn't serious, or our king wasn't serious now. Verse 32, it shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls. On the ninth day of the month at evening, from evening to evening, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. And that's right up in uh, over here, okay? That's your the ninth day. You can see right in the circle there, that's going to be the ninth beginning at the sundown of the 17th, Monday, okay, the 9th at, at sundown, and then the 10th will be the 18th of September, okay, that is the Day of Atonement, please people, afflict yourself, pray, 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 let our prayers be effective, let us pray for, you know, the peace of Jerusalem, but let us also pray for all those that are suffering in Africa and these other places where, 
you know, they shouldn't even be suffering. Let us pray for our king to return, to bring forth the prophecies uh, so we can see a little more clearly. Let's pray for the spirit of prophecy. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit we should pray for the most. Healings are coming. They're going to be here. Uh, they're already here. But not many is going to receive healings unless they're going to keep the commandments and the laws and put their trust in our king. Otherwise, there's not going to be healing for them. Uh, it would be a curse on them, actually, if they were to get it with false pretense, you know, to be healed to run back out to their adulteries or their wicked ways, you know, it, they'd be seven times worse off. Our king even, you know, told them, you know, the, the lame that he, he healed that time that was sitting by the, the pool, and uh, he told them, you know, he says, uh, go and sin no more. Something much worse will befall you. And something much worse than that, man, it, it'd be pretty bad. <laughs> so he shouldn't want to sin. And sin is in 1st Yachinon or 1st John chapter 3 and verse 4. Read the whole chapter, but sin is transgressing the laws. It's lawlessness. And, and here it's saying, don't work on that day. If you do, you know, he's going to destroy you. So please keep the day of, <laughs> a day of at one minute. Okay, it says in verse 34, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, verse... Uh, Chapter 23, verse 34. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Father. Okay, now, he's going to explain in here in short, but once again, it's a seven-day feast, but there's going to be an added day to it because it spoke of our Father rejoicing so much with the children during one of the Feast of Tabernacles. He begged them to stay another day. So this is seven days still. It was at that time, but it was so great, an added day come to the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's going to be called the last great day. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Father. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. Of course, uh, in my calculations there, it is the, uh, uh, the 22nd of September at sundown until the 23rd at sundown, okay, is going to be uh, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's going to be a Sabbath. And if it don't fall on a seventh day Sabbath, the first and last days of the feast, you can cook on them. There's no regulation against cooking on those days. Sometimes you get a double Sabbath. You know, and in those days, food most likely would have perished by the uh, you know, the end of the second Sabbath. You prepared it the day before on a Friday, then you have a seventh day Sabbath, then you have a first day of a feast Sabbath. You know, that's a long time for food to last without refrigeration and such. So, you know, as long as it doesn't fall on a seventh day Sabbath, you can cook on the first and last days of a feast. Okay, it says, for seven days, verse 36, for seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Of course, that's our kings doing that. Don't worry about it. He's taking care of all the sacrifices. He takes care of the, uh, the wave offerings during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I'm sure he probably sends the Holy Malachim down, and they probably harvest from, you know, Mount Zion or whatever, and bring it up to have it turned into flour and such for the uh, offering to be made, but our king's taking care of all these things. Don't you worry about that. No longer a uh, temple here except for the bodies that we walk in, okay? Everyone has a holy temple, and we should watch what we put into it. Let's be very careful with this and not defile our holy temple. It says, on the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation. See, so... Seven days you make the fire. It's a seven-day feast. But 
on the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and you shall have an offer an offering made by fire that's what our king's going to do it's a sacred assembly and you shall do no customary work on it okay so it's like a sabbath this eighth day it's the day that was added and then he says uh, verse 37 these are the feasts of the father which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations and it, if you can at all cleanse you know a calling cleanse or uh, you know, it would be great. Uh, overall body cleanse before the feast, that would be remarkable. You'll probably get some great communications from our king if, if you do these things because he's going to be right there with you. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere really, just, uh, you know, you can keep it at your house. Uh, if you got a roommate or something you know that, that doesn't believe in the stuff it you can still do so just uh, you know take the time off uh, from work work and uh, keep a feast okay it's it's what you need to do you need to rejoice it's a time that you have the best foods of the year you know you, you save up a little you know so if you've been looking for a brisket you know you can buy a brisket and you know, cook that bad baby up and, and eat it all feast long, you know. It's uh, something that you might enjoy to, and look forward to feast for. If you got children, by all means, buy them some presents, you know. Get them some new scriptures or headscarves, you know, things of that sort. So, you know, things that they would enjoy. Uh, coloring books, you know, that you can probably make, you know, of uh, uh, characters from the scriptures, you know, that they could sit and, you know, read a story or whatever. They love these kind of books and, and, and gifts. Make it an enjoyable time for them and always have food ready for them. <laughs> You'll be amazed how they'll eat during the feast too, okay? And don't eat pork, okay? Don't eat uh, ostrich and emu. Don't eat these unclean things. If you're going to keep the feasts, you need to eat clean and proper foods. Our Father wants you to bring whatever your heart's desire is. Okay, even wine and strong drink, don't practice drunkenness. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a few drinks, but you don't want to, you know, be falling down all over the place there and, uh, you know, causing harm and, and making people think you're a real jerk. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't want to do those things. You're there to, to praise our Father uh, through our King and enjoy yourself bring the best of everything you can get okay and, and enjoy it and be thankful for it and our king's going to be bringing all kinds of uh sacrifices and stuff for us it, like it says here and we'll read 36 again for seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh on the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Father it is a sacred assembly and you shall do no customary work on it these are the feasts of the Father which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh a burn offering and a grain offering a sacrifice and a drink offerings everything on its day okay our king's going to be doing this for us that's his duty he's the high priest okay and he's taking care of these things for his body here on this earth and for the number no man can count that will come out because of our teachings Leviticus 38 besides the Sabbaths of the Father besides your gifts besides all your vows and besides all your free will offerings which you give to the Father also on the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land see it's the harvest time it says you shall keep the feast of Yahweh for seven days on the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest <laughs> seven day feast but on the eighth day <laughs> okay so it's the day that was added and you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of the beautiful trees branches of palm trees the boughs of leafy trees the willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before your father for seven days okay and then he elaborates even more he says you shall keep it as a feast to the father for seven days in the year it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations you shall 
celebrate it in the seventh month. Okay, in verse 42, he's going to tell you also what to do with, you know, some of the boughs of these trees and such that you're to gather. He says here, you shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths. And you become a native Israelite when you desire nothing more than to keep the laws and commandments. Okay, you enter into that covenant of the family name of Yahweh. And right now, our king is ruling over the family. The father gave the king all things, so he's telling you, you need to be dwelling in booze. What I'm going to do is go cut me down some saplings, and I'm going to put four posts up around my couch in there, and that's where I'm going to be dwelling uh, for the feast. And I'll go ahead and deck it out with branches, maybe some uh, apple boughs or something with the fruit still on it hanging. Uh, just want to make sure there's no ticks. You know, spiders aren't so bad, but you want to make sure there's no ticks if you do this. But you need to, uh, you know, make a little uh, uh, sukkah or whatever in your living room or something, and y'all get air mattresses or just some throws or something, and, you know, dwell under in it. You know, for the feast, it'll be pretty great for the family, you know, the moms and the dads and the children all out there nestled up and, you know, watching some really great movies like the, uh, it's called the Gospel of John or the Book of John, and they've got all these other ones, you know, of uh, the certain books and, and everything. It would be a great time for you to catch up on some of these old movies, pop you some popcorn, you know, and, and uh, absorb the word the best you can. Now, I, I like the book of John uh, a lot because it, it's somebody's translation. I don't know what it is, but the movie is word for word of that translation. You could pull out a King James and pretty much read right along with it, narration and everything. It's, it's uh, word for word. And the insight you get from seeing that, especially on a feast, okay, it's quite impressive very impressive. Uh, you'll get so much out of it. But you want to, you know, make your little lean-to or something there in your living room or, you know, uh, around your bed. And you want to eat a meal in there, too, every day. You want to eat your meals within there. You're supposed to dwell in there. And to sleep in there, man, it, it's going to be a blast for you. Just take my word. If you ever was a kid and, you know, you put up sheets or something as tents, you know, well, you love putting up a couple uh, uh, sticks there, you know, and make yourself a booth. It says, you shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israel shall dwell in booths. See, you're not going to dwell in a booth, most likely, if you're not of Israel, because you won't be there at the feast. You won't be having these feasts, so you won't be doing it anyway. Now, if you're dwelling in them, then okay, you're a native Israelite. And you can't say you're not, because all the tribes had been dispersed to the four corners of the earth. Okay, so the lost tribes, they're lost. <laughs> Our king, he knows who they are. They're written of in the book of life. And, you know, the bloodlines go through everywhere, man. Everybody's from Adam and Eve. And then after that, everyone was from Noah, you know, and his wife and his three sons and their wives. That's where everyone came the second time there. So we're all, <laughs> you know, we all have the same DNA. But if you're going to dwell in booths, you know, then you've been adopted back. You are native born then. Uh, well, not so much native-born. You're a native Israelite, not native-born in Jerusalem or whatever. But, you know, native because you keep the laws and commandments. Verse 43, That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your father. So Moshe declared to the children of Israel these feasts of Yahweh. And, you know, I, I just wanted to point out before we close here that our Father wants you to dwell in booths during this feast to remember the children of Israel, okay? When they was out in the wilderness and such, they dwelled in booths, okay? When he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Uh, same thing with the Feast of 
unleavened bread. We eat unleavened bread every day of the feast. We have to eat a little bit of unleavened bread or a whole bunch of unleavened bread. Doesn't matter which, but we eat it every day uh, because it's to remember the affliction, the bread of affliction that Israel had. Because when they left, they didn't have the rising uh, flour and such, okay? The, uh, they didn't have the bread made in advance, so they didn't have time to let it ferment. And that's how they usually did it. They'd, you know, get their water and stuff together with the flour and they'd leave it out and the yeast and stuff from the air, you know, they'd mix it here and there and it would start to bubble to where it would, you know, bring forth the leavening, uh, the yeast, and make the little air bubbles there uh, from digesting the sugars of the wheat. And you eat unleavened bread every day for seven days in remembrance of that affliction, but then also he wants you to do the same thing in booths for seven days. He wants you to dwell in a booth. You know, sure, you can go outside and everything, you know, that's fine. But he wants you to dwell in it. When you eat your meals and such, do as the Israelites did back in the wilderness. Share their experience, okay? And, and eat your meals, uh, get you some great rest, enjoy your family. That's what these feasts are about. Our Father's calling his family together, and he wants the children's hearts to be turned back to you. And your heart's turned back to the children. Pay attention to them when you're in that booth, you know, and, and listen to what they think. Ask them about scriptures, what their best scripture is and such. And, hey, play the Adam game, okay? Uh, my children had invented this a long time ago. It's called the Adam game because Adam invented uh, names for all the animals, the beasts and the birds and such, and our creator spoke of that in Genesis. I brought a video about that that, though, I don't know, maybe 13 views on it or something, because, you know, who wants to play games? But it's very simple. If some somebody starts out with an animal, like an elk, okay, well, I say elk. Well, the next guy has to take the last letter of elk and start an animal name from that, okay? Like a uh, uh, kangaroo starts with a K. Now, the next person would have to start an animal name with the O, owl. And it goes around and around, and if you get stuck on one, uh, you're allowed... You know, you make your own rules, okay? If you can't think of an animal within, you know, a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, whatever, then you just drop out of the game. Or you get two or three strikes, you know, whichever. Uh, you're not supposed to help each other with this. Uh, and you might want to get a dictionary, too, because there's always going to be someone in there, man, that comes up with these names of something. And, uh, you know, there just isn't any of those things. But they'll always try, and they'll even convince themselves that it is so they could stay in the game. But it's an excellent game. Uh, make your own rules up as you go along. You can't repeat the same animal, okay? Uh, you got to pay attention to what's being said. you got to be on your toes. And enjoy this feast, everybody, really. I love you all. I hate what you do. If you haven't repented, I hate what you do. Uh, if you are repenting, I'm loving what you're doing. And I hope we all make it soon, man. May our king return quickly. Shalom.